and welcome back. Winters are knocking on the doors and for me the most exciting part of winter is the variety of food this season has to offer. It's not as cold in this part of the country but still with the slight nip in the air shifting to the seasonal food is something I look forward to. So today I thought of sharing many delicious recipes that you can enjoy this winter before these winter goodness fades. Well, when it comes to winter prep, the major time goes into cleaning and sorting the leafy vegetables. My suggestion here is to bring in a variety of leaves but in smaller quantities to make this task feel less cumbersome. I am cleaning methi but it implies on any other leafy vegetable. Once clean, I don't immediately wash them as it increases the chances of leaves rotting faster. Instead, I keep them covered with a cotton cloth and wash thoroughly right before using. I section the leaves according to my meal plan and keep them in an airtight container in the fridge. However, it's best to consume them within 2 days else the leaves lose their nutrients. So here are a few recipes you can make from these leafy vegetables. I am using methi but you can use any other leafy vegetable of your choice. So the first recipe I am showing is the methi masala paratha. In 1 cup whole wheat flour, I'll add all the spices mentioned on the screen and knead a paratha like dough. During winter I never make normal dough. I always prefer to add some kind of leaves as it is the easiest way to add some nutrition into our diets. With all the spices, methi leaves a very delicious flavor and even kids enjoy this paratha without any hesitation. I'll toast the paratha's on the tawa with the help of some ghee and instant winter breakfast gets ready. Another winter delicacy with leafy veggies is making sabzi. Gajar methi is a perfect and very delicious combo to enjoy during winters. For the sabzi, I'll chop all the veggies and crush some ginger and garlic. Now in some oil, add cumin seeds, mustard seeds and ajwain. and let them crackle now add the crushed ginger garlic paste and saute the chopped carrot till half done i am unable to find the red carrots near me as yet so using the orange one only but if you have the red carrots nearby make sure you use them now in the spices goes all the normal spices and then cook it covered when carrots are half done add the chopped methi and cook covered for another 5 minutes check if the carrots are done then add coriander leaves and lemon juice in the end and gajar methi sabzi is ready to serve leafy vegetables are super versatile so the next recipe i'll make is methi ki kadi again wash and chop the methi leaves and keep them ready Now I'll crush lots of garlic and some ginger and keep it aside. For the curry mix in 1 cup curd, I'll add 1 tablespoon besan and 1/2 teaspoon turmeric and mix it well. Now into this add 3 cups water gradually while whisking the curry mix. Now to cook the curry, I'll take 1 teaspoon ghee in a kadai. You can even take oil as well. Add some methi seeds and after 5 seconds add mustard seeds, dried red chili, green chili, curry leaves and crushed ginger garlic paste and saute for 1 minute. Now add the chopped methi leaves and again saute for 1 minute. In goes lots of hing and red chili powder and give everything a last mix. 
Now sieve the curry mix and keep stirring till curry starts boiling. Let it simmer on slow heat for 15 minutes before adding the final tadka. In the tadka, I'll saute some mustard seeds and kasuri methi in some ghee. Then add red chilli powder and add it into the curry. Garnish with lots of coriander and dry mint leaves if you have them as it brings out amazing freshness into the curry and methi curry is ready. Another winter delight that is an absolute winner in my house is amlas. If you don't have them, then today I'll share two super delicious side dishes with amlas that you can eat daily with your meals. These recipes hardly take any time to cook and can last in your fridge for up to a week or even more. To begin cooking, I'll first boil amlas in pressure cooker for two whistles on high flame. You can even steam them in a steamer for 15 minutes. So the first recipe I'll be making is Amla Ke Tapore. It is a kind of instant Amla pickle and tastes super delicious. The only effort goes by in making this dish is collecting the spice mix. And since it gets ready so quickly, it is a good idea to keep everything ready beforehand. So in a bowl, I'll add saw, jeera, ajwain, methi seeds and kalonji. Now, I'll take around half teaspoon yellow mustard and one fourth teaspoon rye and crush them slightly. Now, for the masalas, I'll take all the powdered spices mentioned on the screen and keep them ready. Also chop some garlic as it tastes good in this pickled amla. Once boiled, de-seed the amla and now let's make the tapore. In 1 tablespoon oil, add chopped garlic and all the seeds and saute for around 1 minute. Now into this, add the boiled amla and saute in oil for 2 minutes. Now add salt and all the dry powdered spices and mix everything very well. Stir for 2 minutes and amla tapore is done. Garnish with coriander leaves and store in fridge for up to a week. But I guarantee you, it won't last that long. Talking of Avla side dishes, my other favorite is Avla Chunda. Chunda is loved by kids too as it makes a very delicious, sweet and sour condiment. For the Chunda, start by grating the boiled Avla. I have taken around 1 cup of boiled Avla. To add flavor, a few whole spices goes in the Chunda. So, I'll start by first collecting them all. Now dry roast all the whole spices for 1 minute and grind them coarsely. For cooking chunda, start by sautéing the amla in a pan. This step helps in taking the excess water out of the amla. Now add half cup jaggery powder and mix well. You can add whole jaggery as well, just crush it a bit before adding. As the jaggery melts, it will release the liquid. Now at this stage, add the prepared spice mix and add salt, black salt, red chilli powder, garam masala powder and Kashmiri red chilli powder and mix everything well. After 2 minutes, add 1 teaspoon ginger powder as it helps keep the body warm during winter. And now let the chunda simmer till water dries out. I like to add a few melon seeds into the chunda so I'll dry roast them till they start popping. 
Now add them in amla chunda and mix everything well. A super delicious and healthy amla side dish is ready. As told before, store it in an airtight container in the fridge for up to a week. Our third winter delight is peas. Although peas come all year round in frozen form, but fresh peas taste super yum. So let me show you two super amazing recipes made from peas. Starting with dahi wale matar. It's a super quick recipe and such a great change in taste from the regular vegetables. In the basic prep, I'll chop one onion, one tomato and 3 to 4 garlic pods along with some coriander leaves. Now in a kadai, take 2 teaspoon oil and add mustard seeds, chopped garlic and onion. Add the peas along with the onion and saute for 1 minute. Now add the spices and around half a cup water and cook the peas covered till they soften. Once done, add the chopped tomatoes. Now take one cup of curd sitting at room temperature and whisk it well. Once the tomatoes soften, turn the gas off and add the whisk curd. Now mix well for 2 minutes before turning the stove back on and cook for the last couple of minutes. Garnish with coriander leaves and delicious dahi mata sabzi gets ready. The other delicious delicacy from matar is matar paneer paratha. They make the perfect hot breakfast in cool cool winters. So let's see how to make them. I'll start by kneading a soft dough for paratha and keep it aside as now I'll prepare the matar paneer filling for these parathas. Start by chopping one onion and some coriander leaves. Now I'll make a roasted spice mix as it adds great flavor to the paratha. For that, I'll dry roast the spices and coarsely grind them. Now for the filling, in 1 teaspoon oil, saute some cumin seeds, onion, turmeric, red chilli powder and peas. After 1 minute, add salt and grated ginger and mix well. While peas soften, I'll grate the paneer and keep it ready. Once the peas are done, mash them a bit before adding the grated paneer. Add the coriander leaves and crushed spices and mix everything well. Cook this mix for 2 to 3 minutes to remove all the moisture out and keep it aside to cool down. Till then, knead the dough again to soften the dough. Now take small balls and make the dent in the center. Place the filling in generously and bring the dough together to make the round ball. Now roll the parathas and toast them on tawa with some ghee.
सुपर हेल्दी प्रोटीन रिच मटर पनीर पराठा गेट रेडी आई टेयर एंड शो यू हाउ वेल द फिलिंग स्प्रेड वेन वी मेक द पराठा लाइक दिस Every bite will have the goodness of mutter and paneer into this panatha. Do try them this winter before peas run out of the market. Dry fruits are also a winter delight and I had shared not one but many dry fruit and nuts recipes in my last vlog including dry fruit laddus, dry fruit milk masala and dry fruit namkeen. So make sure you check that vlog and try out those dry fruit recipes as well. I'll share the vlog link in the description box for you to check. Apart from the vegetable, I also bring change in flour during winters. Bajra and makke ka aata bring a great change in the taste and texture to our meal. But since it can get spoiled quickly, I bring in small batches and make sure I consume them as soon as possible. You can add the bajra aata with normal whole wheat flour to make regular chapatis but I'll make chapatis just with the bajra flour. The trick to make perfect bajra roti is kneading the dough with water well till it becomes soft. For one cup dough, I'll be using half a cup water and knead it very well. Then, like ordinary chapatis, make a ball and roll it in the dry flour. The way I make bajra chapatis is by patting and spreading it gently. This way, chapatis don't break and comes out round and nice. Put them on the hot tawa and add some water on the top to avoid chapatis from drying out and breaking further. Now, turn the other side and once toasted well from both the sides, Toast the chapati on direct flame. Nice and hot bajra chapatis are ready to serve. Chapati is a no-brainer, but being from Rajasthan, we also enjoy bajra rab or bajra rabdi. It's like a hot and warm soup, perfect for cold winters. It gets ready with very basic ingredients, but tastes super delicious. If possible, get the freshly ground bajra flour from the mill and you can clearly feel the difference in the taste. To begin making the rabdi, take a pan and add 1 teaspoon ghee. Now into this, I'll roast 2 teaspoon bajra flour. The soup texture in rab comes from buttermilk. So I'll use homemade curd and I'm using around half a cup and first whisk it well. Now take the roasted flour and add to the curd. To add some flavors, I'll add half teaspoon roasted cumin powder. 1 4 teaspoon black salt, crushed black pepper and some salt and whisk this well to dissolve any lumps. Now add around 2 cups of water and again mix well. The last step is to thicken the rab to give it a soupy texture. So I will cook this mix in a pan for 4 to 5 minutes till it thickens well. The key to a good rabdi is to use sour curd or buttermilk as it makes it taste delicious. Let it simmer on slow heat for a couple of more minutes and winter special bajra rabdi is ready. Garnish with bundi and some dry mint leaves. I highly suggest that you try the rabri this winter. And with all these recipes, I hope you found this vlog useful. And if you did, 
Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section which recipe you are tempted to try. Join me on Instagram for some behind the scenes and to share your version of these recipes with me. And I'll see you in my next vlog. Until then, stay tuned and stay connected.